again uh, to let you know that it's uh, it's Pastor Gail this morning, and uh, I am not going to continue in the sermon series that Jeff had started. Uh, we talked about that, and I would prefer that he just continue in that series. He's got that all worked out, and I know that you're going to be extremely blessed with that. Uh, but my, uh, my intermission to that uh, is uh, that... Um, it's not about what's so amazing about grace, even though it is going to enter into that. But it's a response to that answer that we're going to look at this morning. And the response to that, what is so amazing about grace, is that we serve. Now I know that you're saying, oh boy, this is going to be a sermon about work. You know, work for the Lord, okay? To, to do more work, to add more program, to expand church program. Well, I'm here today to assure you that that's not what we're here for. Yes, there is going to be work, and yes, that probably will expand in regards to our life and, and to the, the life and the church in regards to its, its uh, focus. But what I really want us to focus in on is what it means to serve out of thanksgiving. To answer the questions of why we serve is probably as important or more so as to how we serve. And we're going to look at both of those things. Before we do, though, I'd like for you, us, to, uh, to share together the text that I have that kind of centers in uh, what, we're, what we're going to be discussing. So if you'll open your Bibles up to uh, uh, the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, and the reading starts at the 29th and goes up through the 39th verse. As soon as they had left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, when it was still very dark, he got up and went out to, to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went through Galilee proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. May God add his blessing to that reading. Super Bowl Sunday. That's what today is, right? Isn't that right? Sunday, today is, today's, today's it. And boy, it's always a big deal, isn't it? It always seems like we always hype up and, and uh, we have great, well, maybe not as much this year, but that we have great big gatherings and parties. And hopefully we're going to be safe in doing that. But we all have our favorites. And I guess, you know, I'm kind of safe here, maybe. Uh, and Paul, you're going to need to help me out if you're listening today. Uh, that the whole mission, okay, if we're talking about a mission in regards to Super Sunday, is that Tom Brady does not win another Super Bowl. Okay, whatever. I, and there again, uh, I, I apologize to all those, and uh, I even have family in Florida. Okay, we're a Tom Brady fan, so I, I apologize. But, but I really want him to get beat. Okay, shh. Okay. Anyway, enough of that. It is kind of nice, though, to have a break, isn't it? And Super Sunday is kind of that break that we have, and, and it's kind of a little bit of a, uh, a time of relief from 
I'll have to admit, uh, for myself and many, a horrendous year. A horrendous year of uh, so many things, of illness, of COVID, of, you know, uh, a lot of evil, I think, up unrest within people. And, and we're going we're gonna to address that a little bit. And we are still in a mess. Even, you know, a Super Bowl will be done, and then here we come Monday, and we got our same situation, don't we? Uh, the same mess with the pandemic. We, we, we pray that we're seeing the end of that coming, and, and there again, there's hope for that. But we still have to be really careful, and there are many uh, situations in which uh, we have to take care of each other. And then there's the evil unrest. And I guess that's really gnawing at my heart. The evil unrest of socially and economically and politically. Not something that just surfaced this year. But it's something that I think has been bullying up not only in our country, but worldwide. We're still in a mess. I wish it were different. Don't we wish that it could be like it used to be? You know, all the family, I don't really remember that search, that family uh, series on TV, and it was kind of a fun one, a comical, where uh, Archie and, and uh, what was her name? Edith. Edith, Edith yeah. Uh, and, and they're, of course, their they're living um, son and, and his wife, or no, it was a daughter and his son-in-law, uh, which he referred fondly and, and lovingly as Meathead, okay? But anyway, they always had a song at the end, you know, uh, those were the days, you know, and they, they dream of, in fact, I'm going to just recite it real quick to you, okay, uh, uh, what that song was, I don't know whether I can sing it or not, but it starts out, boy, the way Glenn Miller played, songs that made the hit parade, guys like us, we had it made, those were the days, don't need no welfare state, everybody pulled their weight, gee, our old LaSalle ran great. Those were the days. And you knew where you were then. Girls were girls and men were men. Matt Mister, you could use it, man, like Herbert Hoover again. People seemed to be content. Fifty dollars, pay the rent. Freaks were in the circus tent. Those were the days. Take a little Sunday spin. Go to watch the Dodgers win. You're yourself a dandy day that cost you under a bin. Hair was short and skirts were long. Kate Smith really could so sold a song. I don't know just what went wrong. Oh, those were the days. If you remember, I, and there again, I don't know the tune that well. I tried to fake it through, but. Oh, the real clincher of that is, what was the real truth? Well, the real truth was, back in Hoover, Herbert Hoover's day, 75% of the people that were seniors were poverty-stricken, 25% unemployment. We were in the worst depression of our, own, our, of our history, and there was a brewing of a war coming. So... Those were the days, weren't necessarily those were the days. There was a mess. What is a mess? What can we do? Lord, we need some answers, don't we? I think Jesus and, and the scriptures gives us a clue in regards to what it means to respond to God's grace. And that is in looking at Jesus, first of all, to see how we're to serve. There again, we're going to deal with how and why we serve. But how did Jesus serve? What was it that in his actions and the way he, he, he showed us how we indeed had, could have some answers, even in today's chaotic world? Jesus' world was a mess. There was unclean spirits, there was disease, there was political unrest, there was injustice, and there was huge amounts of poverty. And yet, Jesus' response is the very response that I think brings us healing 
in the way that we would serve the same way. The response of Jesus, a little audacious, a little even reckless at times, but he had put his head down. He forget himself and, and his cultural restrictions many times and opi uh, political opinions, and he served. How did he serve? Well, he served by addressing evil. Well, even, even in the synagogue, the day before he went to Simon's house, they went to the synagogue, which is kind of like going to the church, and there was somebody there right in the, right in the worship service that had an unclean spirit. And Jesus addressed that and dealt with that and healed that man. And the spirits left him. Many times we think, well, ooh, this has got weird, unclean spirits. And you know, I think truly there are unclean spirits today. We may not see them in quite the same light as the early church did, but they are definitely present. And Jesus addressed those. And he addressed not only unclean spirits, but he responded to illness. Just like he responded, responded to Simon Peter's uh, mother-in-law, walked into this home, was not even his home. And see, customs are that day when Jesus, when people would walk into homes, okay, they were owned by somebody else. You know, they were to be the guest and, and the people that were, were hosting that. They would come out or they would be present. And if they weren't present, then definitely the guests would just mind their business, okay? That was normal. But when, uh, when Simon Peter told him that his mother-in-law was ill with, uh, with a uh, fever, what did he do? He broke customs. It was a no-no. And he searched out the home to find her, okay, and, and, and touched her. She was unclean. She was, back then, you know, sickness and disease was something that was being shunned. They didn't understand uh, many times what we understand today in science in regards to disease. They looked at, at, at illness as maybe something that was demonic even, or a, a supernatural thing that was in a person's life. But he understood that she needed healing. And she, he reached out. He addressed the illness. And there again, he proclaimed goodness to the ungodly. You know, he spent that night and he healed people. They came from all over the town in Capernaum. And, and he healed all night. And, and he cast out demons all night. You know, you would think he'd be wore out. But then as daylight came, what did he do? Which is part of how you serve. Part of how Jesus even showed us how to serve, serve life in his, as his example. He went off to a quiet place and prayed. He regenerated his spirit. Isn't that, isn't that something we need to do more? Isn't that a time when we can do that and we know we can do that? Yes. He went back and he served again. And, and not only did he serve in regards to healing, but, but he addressed and proclaimed goodness to the ungodly. To people that might, we might think of as even icky. Okay? They didn't know God. And yet, he, he, it was his way of serving proclaim the good news to them. To proclaim that how God loved even them and they were worthy. Later on, he, he associated and maybe befriended uh, uh, tax collectors, okay? Uh, he touched lepers. You didn't touch lepers in Jesus' day. That was just total, total taboo. But he touched lepers and he healed lepers. Wow. See, Jesus understood what it meant. Even though his, his world was messed up, our world is messed up, that we don't focus on the mess. Part of our healing and part of our restoration as a, as a human race is that we put our head down. In spite of the circumstances, and we serve and share Christ. Now that's how. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the why. You see, I think most of us know what we should be doing. If you really level with yourself, 
Yes, I need to share more. I need to give more. I need to da 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 serve more of this and work more of this. But if we don't answer clearly the why, it ain't going to get done. The why is the most important part to see why we serve. One of the reasons that I think we can say that we can, will serve and why we will serve is that God sees everything and everyone sacred and touchable. See, that's something I think we all need to, to be aware of. That God loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him can have eternal life. He sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. And he sent him to, to show us an example of how to serve. Knowing, show us as an example that no matter how messed up, how icky, how much we resent somebody and, and their opinions, they are worthy. They are a creature of God that they're worthy of restoration. We're all worthy of restoration. Some of you may out there this morning think that you're not worthy enough of God's love, but you are. You are worthy. You're worthy not only of restoring, but of healing. And see, the greatest example in regards to the scripture and many parts of that scripture I've spoken to already but the number one thing I want to leave you this morning is the burn that comes in Simon's mother-in-law's heart when she was healed of the illness. What was it that said? She began to serve them. Now, I don't, she might have been a servant before, but to me that responds to the fact of why we would serve. Why we serve is because it comes from a burn inside us. Maybe those of you who have already sensed this burn. Maybe your, your burning has been there, but it's kind of maybe been kindled down. Maybe because of the circumstances of COVID. Maybe because of uh, circumstances of your life. The fire needs to burn again. The burning comes when we begin to realize what God has done for us, beginning to serve them, not because we need to, but because we want to pass on blessings. We want to be able to serve out of the thanksgiving that God has given us. Before I end my message this morning, I want to ask you if you can sense that burning for yourself this morning. See, I need that fire to burn stronger in me again. I need to sense that, that, that thankfulness of burn that, that Simon's mother-in-law Surely had to have sensed when she got up from her, her serious illness and was healed uh, from this fever. We have been healed, folks. Healed of sin. Healed of unrighteousness. Healed of unworthiness to a plane of restoration and healing. That's what brings the burn. That's what drives our force into serving. That's when we start addressing the evil. And see, that's more, uh, one of the things that just, uh, I, you know, I think, well, I'm kind of limited in regards to maybe visitation. I'm kind of limited in this and that and the other. But I think that one of the things that God has put in my heart is that we as a country, we as a nation, have gone through transitions economically and politically that have led us to evil paths. I sense that. 
Maybe more than ever before. See, when I was young, I was running with kids, and, and, and you know, you know how it is. You go to a baseball games, you don't know, you don't sense what's going on. I've dedicated myself to research. This research of what I sense as being evil that has implanted into our hearts in this country. Not only to understand it, because Jesus saw it right off. When he saw the evil, he knew it, and the evil knew him. Right now, evil sometimes disguises itself. We see the aftermath of it. We see the, the fighting and the hate and, and the uh, abuse with each other. We need to get this right, folks. I need to get a sense of where we need healing most. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some reading. I've started the process. The other thing is to face that and let other people to join on and end that. To see that evil. Maybe not quite the same that I see it. But to understand the symptoms are there. And we need to deal with it. To respond to the illness. Oh my gosh, I look at some of these early responders and these people that are, that are risking their lives and helping people every day. What an amazing thing. And I just, I just, my heart pours out to them. And that's not just the COVID, but to, to, to see illness in all avenues, mental health, the discouragement, the need of counseling, to, to see it, and to not just see it, but to respond to it as Jesus saw it. He was a magnet to those places and those people that needed his help. We need to as his disciples gravitate to those same places. See them as they walk in in needs of help and healing. And also to reach out. Reaching out. You know, we can learn all the tricks of evangelism. There are specific skills in that that we can learn Tell you, if we don't really have the heart, the heart of seeing people that are lost and being willing to reach out to them for the Lord because of our thanksgiving, it'll never happen. This church has an amazing opportunity of ministry here in Rochester, Indiana. There are so many things that I mean, Jesus would, he would be run, wouldn't he? I mean, he'd be running up and down the street. I mean, he would see opportunities of serving and healing everywhere. We need to have that same passion. We need to have that same drive as Jesus had. I challenge you today that if you don't have that burn of thanksgiving, that you indeed can, through God's forgiveness, of your sins that you are worthy of God's love and that in that acceptance of that and allowing Christ to come in as your Lord and Savior of your life that you will then move into the avenues of serving serving with joy not with dread not with obligation but with amazing joy Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this message today. This little snippet of Jesus' life and what was going on in his early ministry. How he just kind of zoomed in and, and, and just uh, uh, almost took people's breath away with healing and understanding and seeing evil, with seeing sickness and disease and heartache was seeing those unaccepted, that, that he reaches out, accepts them, and touches them, and befriends those that are casted, casted away. Lord, restore our burden this morning. And this we pray in your holy name. Amen.